Hi, my name is Lucinda and I have Joanna and Evangeline with me. We are students from the Monash Law Clinics. In this video, we will provide an overview of parental responsibility. We will also discuss how time arrangements are determined. The best interest of the child is the paramount consideration when determining parental responsibility and time arrangements. Best interests is determined by the primary considerations of the benefit to the child of having a meaningful relationship with both of their parents and the need to protect the child from physical and psychological harm and from being subjected or exposed to abuse, neglect and family violence. The consideration of protecting the child from harm carries greater weight. The court will also look at other considerations, including the child's views, the parent's ability to look after the child's needs and any family violence. For a summary of best interests of the child, please see the Vic Pathways video entitled Best Interests of the Child. The definition of the best interests of the child can also be found in Section 60CC of the Family Law Act. Section 61B defines parental responsibility as all the duties, powers, responsibilities and authority which by law parents have in relation to children under 18 years. Examples of parental responsibility include deciding things like where the child lives, medical treatment, education, religious upbringing, the child's name, the child's passports. Parental responsibility does not include making decisions about the day-to-day -day care of the child. For example, what the child eats or wears is not included. As a starting point per section 61c, parental responsibility is ordinarily shared between parents and does not automatically alter when there is a change in the parent's relationship, such as separation or remarriage. It is only when a dispute arises that it becomes necessary to allocate parental responsibility. Where such a dispute arises and a parenting order is applied for, the court starts with the presumption that it is in the best interest of the child for parental responsibility to be equally shared. Equal shared parental responsibility requires that parents consult with each other and make a genuine effort to come to a joint decision about certain issues. This responsibility can be shared between two or more people. For example, it could be shared between a parent and two grandparents. The presumption of equal shared parental responsibility is a rebuttable presumption. This means that the court may decide not to enforce it where there are reasonable grounds to believe a. That a parent of the child has engaged in abuse or family violence or b. Where the presumption is rebutted by evidence that satisfies the court that equal shared parental responsibility would be contrary to the best interests of the child. If the court determines that there are reasonable grounds to believe that a parent has engaged in family violence or the child is at risk of being exposed to harm, the presumption of equal shared parental responsibility is rebutted and may result in the other parent receiving sole parental responsibility. Sole parental responsibility means that only one parent has complete responsibility for the major long-term decisions regarding their child. In practice, the sole parent does not need to consult with their ex-partner to reach an agreement about the child's welfare and can make all decisions themselves. Sole parental responsibility can be granted for a specific issue or set of issues only, or it can be given entirely to one parent for all major long-term issues. Other factors, such as an inability for the parents to reasonably or adequately communicate with each other regarding matters of importance to the child, such as health and education and religion, and a lack of trust between the parents may be adequate to satisfy the court that it is not in the best interest of the child for the parents to have equal shared parental responsibility. Please note, the court is generally reluctant to grant sole parental responsibility. Parental responsibility is often confused with the concept of time arrangements, that is, how much time each parent spends with their child. It is important to emphasise that equal shared parental responsibility does not mean equal time spent with both parents. 
For example, both parents might spend equal time with the child, but one parent might have sole parental responsibility for major decisions such as where the child goes to school. However, if equal shared parental responsibility is granted, then the court must consider making an order that the child spends equal time with each of the parents. The court will consider whether equal time is in the child's best interests and reasonably practicable. If the court finds that equal time is not in the child's best interests and is not reasonably practicable, it must consider whether making an order that the child spends substantial and significant time with each parent is in the child's best interests and reasonably practicable. Per section 65 DAA subsection 3, substantial and significant time means that the parent should have the opportunity to be involved in the child's daily routine, as well as special occasions like birthdays and holidays. The court will look at a number of factors to decide whether equal time or substantial and significant time is reasonably practicable. These include how far apart the parents live from each other, the parent's current and future ability to implement an arrangement for equal time or substantial and significant time, and their ability to resolve any difficulties. For example, one parent may work long hours of shift work, which may impact their ability to have equal time. Further considerations include the impact the arrangement would have on the child, as well as any other matters the court considers relevant. If the court finds that neither equal time nor substantial and significant time is appropriate, they may order that one parent spends less time with the child, for example, a few hours a week or on one weekend a fortnight. In this video, we have provided an overview of shared and sole parental responsibility and the circumstances in which these are granted by the court. We have also discussed the court's approach to determining how much time the child spends with each parent, and we have explained the concepts of equal time and substantial and significant time. We hope that this video provides a good foundational knowledge of the principle of parental responsibility and time arrangements. Keep an eye out for future videos in the parenting series from more students of the Monash Law Clinics in collaboration with the Victorian Family Law Pathways Network, Greater Melbourne. For more videos, visit our website at www.vicflpn.org.au.